Dear students, in this unit, we will talk about the phylum protista. Uh, in previous lectures, we have studied about the prokaryotes, and now from onward, we will talk about the eukaryotic organisms. And protists are the unicellular eukaryotic organisms uh, which are found on this planet Earth. As we are all aware that uh, the difference, main difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is the presence of well-defined nucleus. So protists are the advanced unicellular, mostly unicellular organisms which are present. Now, most of them, they are the unicellular, but some of them, they are multicellular and they form a very loose colonies uh, where, wherever they exist on this uh, ecosystem. Now, they're even single cell organisms, they are fully capable of performing the whole functions which are required by N organisms they can perform all those functions very smoothly during their lifetime. Now, their size varies from microscopic unicellular organisms to as large as 75 meter long kelps, which are brown algae. They are also part of this phylum protista. So you can see that they are very diverse organisms. Now, the unicellular protist, they often form colonies which are very loosely bounded organisms which are not like plants and animals which they have a very precise and very organized uh, uniformity of uh, multiplex organisms. They are very loosely bounded and they perform simple beneficial functions in this loosely bound colonies. Now, they, uh, when we talk about the reproduction, protist they reproduce both sexually as well as asexually. In asexual reproduction, we see mitosis more often, while sexual reproduction also exists in which meiosis is the main uh, component which takes place in these protist organisms. Uh, when we talk about the complexity of organisms, even at the unicellular level, they are very complex organisms. Now, when we talk about the motility of uh, these protists, most of the protists, they are motile. They use different means of locomotions. That means could be flagella. They could be cilia. Cilia, as we know, that they are very small hair-like structures, while flagella, they are long hair-like structures which help them in their motion. While many protists, they move with the help of pseudopodia. Now, pseudopodia is just like, uh, you can say they are arms, but they are artificial arms. They have simple, very delicate cell membrane which protrudes or bulge outside and help them in movement from one place to the other place. Now, when we talk about the mode of nutrition in protest, most of them, they are photosynthetic organisms, but many of them, they also live heterotropic life heterotrophic life. In the uh, heterotrophic mode of nutrition, they use different means. We will study in uh, other lectures how they obtain their foods, while some of the protists, they live a life of parasites. Now, these uh, protists, they go, grow uh, during their life uh, cycle in different variations, which we will study in the later units. When we talk about the categories of uh, these protists, different protists exist like we have animal-like protists, we have plant-like protists, and we have fungus-like protists. That means that there are some protists which function just like animals, and there are many protists which exist just like plant exist in this ecosystem. While many of the protists, they also exist just like fungi, they are neither animals nor Plants like. When we talk about the examples, in examples, we have wide variety of protists that includes amoeba, paramecium, brown algae, euglenoids, dinoflagellates, water molds, slime molds, etc. This uh, slide shows a typical example of uh, a protist. It, it's paramecium. Paramecium is a unicellular protist which exists, roam around freely in the water bodies and you can see the typical structure of this paramecium body. 